Hey guys, what is happening? Look at this little flicky bean right here. That's right, I said flicky bean. We're taking a look at the mini J Cape from Something Obscene Knives. I absolutely love this one. And if you followed my channel, you will remember that my first experience with Something Obscene, I picked up a LEC folder, L-E-K, and then I picked up a mini J Cape relatively at the same time. I think they came in like one day after each other. And I wasn't impressed by either one. And then I sold them both and kind of said, you know what, I don't think I like something obscene. Cool company, you know, Felix, the owner, the person running the company, uh, seems like a great guy, he does a lot for charity. I like the branding, I like the attitude, uh, but I just didn't care for the actual knives. Um, everything they do from a production standpoint is made in China. I struggled with that as well. Um, I'm not a super like anti China made knife person, but I definitely gear more towards buying U.S. when I can and uh, supporting U.S. made companies. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but we're not going to get into that. So I did that. I sold those. I thought I was done with uh, something obscene, but then I got a chance to pick up a full size J Cape, one of the uh, Facebook group orders or Facebook group runs. And I really liked it. And it kind of uh, reinvigorated the thought that maybe I could get into these knives. Uh, so I picked that one up and then I came across this one for a really good deal and said, you know, what the hell? I'll give it another shot. I'll give the mini another shot. And I'll be honest, uh, I really, really like this knife. Uh, this is one of my favorite non Strider Emerson knives. Um, it's really, really cool. And it's kind of, uh, kind of unique, um, in and of itself. So let's do some size comparisons. Let's do some weights, you know, get that out of the way. It is a pretty small boy. It's under a three inch blade, depending on where you're measuring it, uh, two and three quarters. If you're going to the top right here, um, total length, what is that? Uh, a little over six and a half inches. So very small. It's about as small as I think I would ever go, uh, which is interesting because I get a full hand grip on it. I get all four fingers. Sorry for my ugly pinky there. Uh, all four fingers, nice choil here, plenty of cutting. I mean, I'll be honest, when I'm cutting things, I don't need more than a couple inches of actual cutting area. Insert joke there. Um, it's, it's more than enough for what I need, but just from a, I don't know, enjoyment standpoint, I, I struggle with the small, small knives. And this is about as small as I could comfortably deploy without a flipper. Any smaller than this, it would have to be a flipper um, because I, I wouldn't be able to get the purchase to like flick it open. So that's neither here nor there. Let's do a weight on this guy before I completely derail off the conversation. 3.1 ounces, super, super light. Uh, part of that has to do with the specific build here because it's not titanium on titanium. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Got a bug or something flew in my mouth. Um, so what are we looking at here? This is interesting because it's a, it's a Frankenstein knife. It's a mix of a bunch of different ones. So the person I bought it from had purchased like three or four mini J capes and they basically disassembled all of them and built them two or three custom, well, quote unquote, custom Frankenstein builds that they wanted. And this was the one that was left over with all the spare parts. And despite it being the leftover one, uh, it works really, really well. Now I can't say exactly what comes from where, but it has the stonewashed DLC blade in M390, I believe, uh, no 20 CV, same, same, but 20 CV. It has the acid wash, dark stone washed lock side, which I really, really like. It looks amazing. Uh, this is featuring the original lightning clip, which I also really like. I've had no problems with this clip. Some people don't like it. Uh, they say these little hooks here hook on their, their pocket and they can't get it in and out. I haven't had that problem. Um, in fact, I've had more of a problem with the thumb studs getting caught because they, they sit pretty proud. You can see they are actually slightly proud of the scales. So that's the only problem I've had with J-Capes, big and small getting in my pocket, is actually the thumb studs getting caught on things. Um, never this uh, pocket clip here. My group 
full size J Cape came with both clips, and I, I went with the old school one. Um, DLC blade stone wash, I already mentioned that. You've got your compound grind, like the J Cape would have, with this awesome ramp with the thumb jimping. And like I said, despite it being small, I get like full full grip, full finger grip. It's very comfortable. Very comfortable. So, you know, it's I'm kind of torn because it seems too small for me. It seems like a little, you know, I can hide it in my hand. But at the same time, uh, it's actually very nice and very comfortable. This front scale here is from a, uh, I think it was REK. I forget the name of the company, but it's an exclusive run that they did with this red. I'm not sure what the material even is. It's it's pretty cool and pretty unique. They've done it a lot of times, but then uh, the, the guy who bought it did a little bit of black writ dye on it and darkened it up because the original one, it's quite red, you know, and you can see the pattern in there, but it's pretty red. Um, so we put some black writ dye, writ dye and it kind of tied the whole thing together. Like it just gives it just enough texture and pop to make it interesting, but it's not ridiculous and it works with this black blade here. So I'll be honest, um, I, man, I got this thing for a great price because it was a Frankenstein, but uh, if I could pick a mini J cape to make, it would probably be something similar to this. So I was super stoked. And the other cool thing with knives like this is you are able to mix and match pieces, right? Because the machining is so precise, you can take these things and swap blades and swap parts. And actually, um, this is a side note. So let's let's get done with this knife, and then I'll I'll kind of talk a little bit about this point here. But uh, overall, I really like this. So I think uh, part of the reason I didn't like the original one is my own hangups with smaller knives. Let's do a comparison here with the paramilitary two. See, and and here's the thing: a lot of it's perception, because I remember when the paramilitary two I thought was a small knife. Yeah, I because I was buying like massive knives at the time. Paramilitary two I thought was a very small, average knife. Now I'm like, no, the para three is a smaller usable knife. The para two is actually a larger knife. Uh, you can see how much smaller it is. Like back in the day, I never would have. I mean, this would have been a tic tac to me. I never would have even entertained the idea of getting something or carrying something like this. Um, so part of it was just getting over that and realizing I can like small knives. And the other part was the original config I got was pretty boring. It was a satin blade, black tie scales, just not my thing, not as visually appealing as this one. This has a lot more going on. The other thing I like about this kind of smaller knife is I can throw this in an alternate pocket. I can throw it into my fifth pocket, my jeans, and carry a full-size knife, what I would consider a full-size knife, um, along with it, you know, like a backup, a small piece that I can pull out. So that's pretty cool. You know, because I'm used to having just a single dedicated knife because I usually carry larger knives. With this one, I can carry this along with other stuff super comfortably. So what I was going to say, side note, not going to go too deep into it. Uh, but one thing I've noticed as I get into these different communities, you know, Emerson, Strider, something obscene, Arcane Designs, EMP, EDC, all very similar, all knife enthusiasts, hobbyists. But they all have their little different quirks. So something obscene is very big on customization, which you're going to say, well, a lot of people are into customization. But it's a little bit different because usually if you customize or quote unquote pimp your knife, uh, the value goes down, especially depending on who did it. You know, if it's somebody reputable and you can prove they did it, little different story. Um, but most of the time, people don't like it, especially like if you go into Strider. Striders are all about maintaining that OEM warranty. So if you've messed with that knife, even if you send it to somebody professional, even if you got a regrind from somebody well known, value goes down. People don't want it. They want that original OEM. They don't want it to be messed with. Um, something obscene is completely different. Like people are always changing things, and it doesn't really affect the value. Like people will buy customized. J capes, no problem. Sometimes they pay more for it. So just a completely different, like it's it's interesting how these different communities do things completely different than other ones or have their own little flavor, I guess. We're all knife enthusiasts, but each grouping, each little subculture of brands or knife types all kind of differ in small ways. And I find that very interesting. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the mini J cape. 
Um, I'm interested to see what you think. I have come around and I really like this. I don't think I'm ever, ever going to get another one, but uh, I'm glad I have this one and I'm going to keep it. So, all right, guys, catch you later.